Okay, so today we're going to be talking about physical and chemical properties and of uh, physical and chemical change. All right, so I'm going to quickly start off and define um, physical and chemical properties. So physical properties, if I could spell that'd be great. All right, physical properties are properties that can be measured or observed without changing the composition of the substance. So we have properties that can be measured or observed without changing the composition of the substance. All right, so um, some examples of this would be you have color, odor, texture, taste, freezing point. Boiling point, melting point, um, density, and there's other ones, but I'm not going to keep writing stuff. All right, so the idea is that you can measure all of this stuff without changing the composition. So you're not undergoing a chemical reaction. Um, like when you boil water from liquid to gas, it's still water. It's just in a different you know, phase. Um, the density of a, su of a substance doesn't change if it's physical, I mean, if it's a solid or liquid, it's, it's still the same density. All right, so now we're gonna move on to chemical properties. And if ever I'm going kind of fast, just um, pause the video, and that should give you time to write everything down. All right, so chemical properties are properties that indicate how a substance reacts with other substances. So properties that indicate how a substance reacts with other substances. Let me move this over so you guys can read it. Okay, so the difference here is these are only observed when a substance undergoes a chemical change. So only observed when a substance undergoes a chemical change. All right, so some examples of this. where you have things that are flammable. You have combustible. Those two words are very similar. I'll probably just use one. Um, reacts with, etc. Um, all right, so ideally, or I mean, uh, Pretty much the only way you're going to observe these is when you um, observe that substance undergoing a chemical change. All right. Um, I have a few more things to talk about before I talk about actual changes. All right. I'm going to talk about intensive and extensive properties super quick. So 
intensive. All right, intensive properties do not depend on the quantity of matter. So do not depend on the quantity of matter. Um, an example of this would be density, state, or temperature. All right, so um, for instance, like for density, say I had a small pebble, right? This is... Um, iron. I don't know what the density is off the top of my head, but if I had this much iron and then I have this block of iron right here and both of these are pure iron, they're going to have the same exact density. That That's the idea. Alright, extensive properties. So, extensive properties do depend on the quantity of matter. Alright, so this would be things like um, volume, mass, size, etc. So how much matter you put into something is going to definitely change all three of these things. All right, so if you need to copy um, copy this page, I would say pause the video real quick, so I'm going to move on. So this video is not super long. All right, so um, now I'm going to talk about physical, chemical changes, and then I have law of conservation of mass, and then we're done. All right. So a physical change is a change in appearance without changing composition. So a change in appearance without changing composition. Alright, so an example of this stuff would be like um, if you cut something in half, like say I had a piece of paper and I cut it in half, I still physically have paper, it's just cut in half. Um, if you pulverize something, um, breaking something, I mean all this stuff is just you're breaking it into smaller pieces. And then we also have what are called state changes, which I went over in another video, so I'm not going to go over it again. But um, essentially, you have things like melting, subliming, freezing, boiling, stuff like that. So um, I'm going to just write a few. So melting, boiling, um, and freezing. I'll just leave it at that. If you want all of them, just look at the other video. So anytime you have a state change, you still have the same um, compound or element or whatever that you had. It hasn't it hasn't chemically changed. It's just changed into a different state. All right. So chemical change. All right. So chemical change is when one or more substances react to form new substances with different chemical and physical properties. So you have one or more substances react to form new substances with different chemical and physical properties.
All right, so examples of this would be, all right, say you had some steel and it started rusting when it came in contact with some oxygen. Um, you have stuff like burning, corrosion, decaying, stuff like that. Anytime when you had something and it changes into something else, you have a chemical change. Because chemically and physically, the new substance is going to be different. All right, so um, easy way to remember this is your beginning substance is different than the ending substance. All right, all chemical changes can be described by a chemical equation. So all chemical changes can be described by a chemical And fix that a a chemical equation. So I'm gonna do a really easy one. Um, we'll just do photosynthesis. So we have six H2O plus six CO2 plus light is equal to glucose plus six O2. And then this is the equation for photosynthesis. All right, so essentially you have six moles of water plus six moles of carbon dioxide plus light to power the reaction because this is endothermic. Um, and you're going to have an output of, or a product of one mole of glucose and six moles of oxygen. So you can see that what came in um, changes into something else on the product side. All right, so I have one more thing to go over, and then this video is over. So um, the law of conservation of mass. All right, so the law of conservation of mass says in any chemical or physical change, matter cannot be created or destroyed. Chemical or physical change matter may not be created or destroyed. All right, so I'm going to give you an example, really easy one with water. All right, so the equation for the formation of water is you have 2H2 plus O2 is equal to 2H2O. So I'm not sure in your class if I'm going to assume you haven't learned how to do this yet, but all right. When you have essentially two moles of hydrogen gas, you have four grams of hydrogen. Uh, one mole of oxygen gas gives you approximately 32 grams. And then if you do the math here, you're going to have two moles of hydrogen gas um, combined with the uh, oxygen. It just it took a different form. It's instead of two individual reactants, you now have one product, which is your water molecule. So you're going to end up with 36 grams. So looking at this chemical equation, there wasn't anything that was created or destroyed. It just changed form. 
and, and that's the easiest way to explain it um so that is it for this video and then if you have any questions you can um, message me on canvas or you know get in touch with me in class